what up everybody? I'm Dave Miranda and this is episode 40 of Just Give Me Five. Damn, Jimmy, we already made it to 40, man. Jeez, time's just been flying, man. Speaking of which, I'm gonna be 40 in the next couple years, shit, so time is definitely flying, man. Man, but shout out to my homegirl Christina with District 48 Clothing for uh, getting me one of these new camo hats, man. These joints are just crazy fresh, crazy fresh. You know what movie I was actually thinking about the other day, though? Who's the Man? Classic, classic, classic. Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. And uh, my favorite scene in there was um, when Bernie Mac, Bernie Mac's working the door, and Ed Lover's out there with him, and Colin Quinn comes up, and he's like, yo, Ed, he's like, they need you in the front, man. There's like some kind of emergency, you know, like, they need you, man, you know? And he looks at him, he's like, all right. So he hands him the money, and he's like, all right, Frankie. He goes, it's $10, no skimming. And he's like, all right, yeah, 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 $10, $10, you know? Soon as Ed Lover walks in the door, yeah, that'd be $15. <laughs> And then Bernie Mac's on the side of him, and he elbows him. He goes, shit, 15. He goes, $20. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, $20. <laughs> that movie is so good, man. And, like, everybody was in that. But speaking of Dr. Dre and that lover, our guest today actually scouted them out for Hot 97 for their radio show back in the day. And we're going to get into that in a little bit. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But if you guys caught episode 39, you saw we had my man DJ Coco on. And let me tell you. That is somebody that is very much needed in the community, you know, for the simple fact that he has a record store, you know, and with everything folding these days, I mean, you know, we lost the legendary circles, you know, we lost recently a revolver records, man, you know, and it's like, and he has vinyl, so it's a record store, you know, and for it to be thriving still and, and, and hanging tough, you know, I mean, that's amazing, you know, and the guy's got a great spirit, um, just a really good human being. We're very, very happy to have him on the show. So shout out to my man Coco, and make sure you guys watch episode 39. All right. But today's guest has been a radio legend, not only in the Arizona community, but throughout the country as well. We're going to talk about his days as a program director with Power 106 in LA, as well as Magic 95.7 in San Diego. We're also going to get into his early days with Power 92, which is currently Power 98.3. And then we're also going to go into his current role in Chicago as a talk show radio host. He's doing some really, really amazing things out there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I present to you Bruce St. James. Hi, I'm Bruce St. James, and all I'm saying is just give me five. Well, I'm, I'm not even convinced it is yet, you know? I mean, let's, uh, let's not jump ahead too much. I, I got into radio um, in a way that nobody else did. Uh, people always say, so how did you get started? Honest Engine, uh, I was caller number 13. I won a, I'm pretty sure it was a cassette, lets you know how long ago it was, right. at a station down in Tucson. And uh, I went down to pick up my prize and I met the DJ, and he said, uh, you want to hang out? And I'm like, well, I've never been to a radio station before, I suppose. And I started, uh, I would write down the requests and answer the, the, the request line. Yeah. And then he, uh, he said, oh, do some character voices and, and, and act for me. And I'm stupid enough to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I started doing that on the radio. Fast forward three months later, I kid you not, uh, it's the staff Christmas party. It's at the boss's house, okay? The owner and general manager. It's an open bar. Right. People are lit. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, you know, they're like trying to drink all the boss's alcohol. Yeah. And it's like 11 o'clock. And my really drunk program director comes up to me and says, um, you, you need to go on the radio at midnight. I go, I don't even, I, I re take requests. He goes, you're the only sober employee we have. And I was like, oh my God. So I literally went and my first night on the radio, I had dead air and everything. And they're like, don't worry about it. We just, you're, you're fine. And so uh, I, that's how I started in radio. And I didn't have anything else to do. I was going to University of Arizona at the time. Nice. And uh, I was a freshman, I was 17 years old. And it just went from there. And I, I, I have no other marketable skills. And um, I don't think I have any other job prospects. That's it. I'm, I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I was I'm real fortunate, real lucky that uh, I got to start off in Tucson doing radio, and uh, we actually had a had a radio station down there, an AM hip hop radio station called Power 1490. It helped put me on the map a little bit. Also, uh, gave a good start to people like R Dub was uh, was there, uh, a kid named Striker who. Uh, was just doing mornings at K-Rock in Los Angeles. Uh, Boogie D, uh, who's worked around the country now. We had a lot of really solid people at that little bitty AM radio station. And uh, it put me on the map. And I got noticed by the folks in Los Angeles. And I I remember the call. Because I was a program director, music director, and afternoon DJ. It's an AM radio station, let's be honest, right? Right. Playing hip-hop, of all things, in Tucson. And uh, they called and they said, you know, we don't want you to be offended. And I'm like, all right. Um, would you be interested in interviewing for our music director job at Power 106? I said, where's the offensive part? Like, where, where, and where, yeah, right. where am I going to be upset about? Of course, I'm interested. What have you lost <laughs> yeah. your ever-loving minds? Right. And so I, uh, I went and interviewed. I managed to get the job. I snowed them uh, just enough, I suppose. And uh, and Power 106 was such an amazing opportunity. I got to work with some some phenomenal people. Uh, that was, you know, the Baker Boys and. Nice. Uh, um, the Nuts, which uh, Joey and Johnny, which is, yeah. you know, J, J Phil and Joey Boy. Um, yeah. Big Boy, for God's sakes. The Baker yeah. Boys. I mean, again, just yeah. some of the icons at the time. And I learned a lot about radio. It was a really good thing. I call it like grad school for radio. Then I got a chance to uh, to go down to San Diego and start a station down there called Magic 95.7, Smooth R&B and Classic Soul. Yeah. And uh, it was a one-of-a-kind opportunity. It was one of those things where I didn't want to leave Power 106. I really didn't. Right. My boss actually came to me and said, I think you need to go do this. And I was like, are you trying to get rid of me? And he says, no. He says, I don't think you're ever going to get another opportunity like this. (laughs) He goes, we certainly don't have one. And uh, we went down and built a radio station out of scratch. Uh, I mean, literally. You you hear a lot about radio stations these days changing format or coming on. We had everything ready and we flipped the switch. We actually we had vans wrapped, we had TV commercials, we had a full air staff, we had production, everything, and we held a party for the city of San Diego in downtown, and we kicked the radio station off, we hit the lights and pointed up to the tallest building in downtown San Diego, the lights went on in the studio and the radio station came out of the speakers fully done and ready to go, and that was magic. And uh, wow. uh, again, I don't think you get the opportunity to do that. So I got to, I was the second employee. I had to go buy station vehicles. I got a great story. So they told me, you got to go buy station vehicles. And we worked for a company back then that just said pay cash, a right. uh, nationwide insurance company. Money they got, you know, they still got yeah. it. And uh, I went down to the, the Ford dealership and I said, I want to buy a uh, Expedition. You know, I, w- I didn't want a van. Vans are whack. I want an Expedition. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I want two of them. And they said, okay, well, what color? I go, I don't care what color. We're going to wrap them. All right, we looking to finance them? No, we're going to write a check. And the guy was like, do you, like, are you serious? And I go, dude, we will take them today. And he's yeah. like, Okay, I'll go get two two expeditions for you. And we drove off in two expeditions. I mean, nice. we were we were there less than an hour. We made this dude's day. Like he probably still tells the story. These lunatics came in and just bought two expeditions. Just took them, like, wrote a check for it, and moved on. So uh, it was real neat to build a radio station. We had three months off air that we were working and hiring staff and doing all that. So that was really really cool. It only lasted one year. The company sold, and uh, I knew. I knew the sale was going to fundamentally change the radio station. I went there um, to work for a company and work for people, mm-hmm. and I knew that, that those people weren't going to be there anymore, and that company wasn't going to be there. So I didn't need to do that, and that right. opened up an opportunity for me to come to Phoenix and end up at Power 92. <laughs> Wow. Um, Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm lucky enough. uh, You know, I've worked in Arizona radio for quite some time between Tucson and Phoenix. And uh, uh, I actually worked at Power in Phoenix on two different occasions. I, when I was living in Tucson and working, used to drive up here and do weekends on Power 92. So I was a part-timer. I would do uh, Friday night, Saturday night, yeah. and then I would drive back and do my regular job in in uh, in Tucson. Heck, I think it cost me money after a hotel room to right. work up here, but I just, you know, I learned a lot from a right. program director named Steve Smith, uh, who, yeah. who, who really did amazing things. He went to Hot 97 in New York, yeah. um, uh, and, 
yes. you know, so I, I, it's really hard, and I'm, I'm not trying to brush it off, and it's not for fear of offending people. Here, here's what I remember. When I think about my time in Arizona radio, when I think about whether it's Tucson or Phoenix, right. I think about people, and I think about some of the amazing, talented people that I've had the opportunity, the pleasure, honestly, to work with. Uh, uh, people who have started and, and, and all I'd say is I saw a little something in them maybe. I, I, I'd like to think all I do is crack the door open, give people a chance, and to watch how some of them have run through that door, kicked it in, and done amazing things with their lives and are still uh, successful. Whether it's in radio or not, uh, it's, it's really kind of my pride and joy. It's, it's, you know, I was always, I was never old, you know. I mean, I, when I was a program director, I was late 20s, you know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah. But the staff was 18 years old, you know, yeah. so I was old man to them. Yeah. Um, so they're like my kids, you know what I'm saying? These are all like, I met them when they were little bitty teenagers, and then I, I see them, and they're working in Los Angeles. They're working yeah. in New York. They're in Atlanta. They're on the air. They're still right. entertaining people. They're still doing something great with their lives. They're program directors. They're music directors. Right. And I am just so proud uh, for whatever little part I got to play in, uh, in them getting a start in radio or wherever they headed off to, and hopefully... Uh, they got something from working with me. Not all of them did. I want to emphasize that. Yeah. I assure you I ran sideways with a few people, but there's a lot of really great ones that ran through uh, the stations I had here. One of the things I really learned, and I, I learned it, I admit I learned it in Los Angeles, and I've tried to apply it in everything I've done, is, you know, LA really taught me, and, and my boss Rick Cummings and Michelle Mercer there really instilled it in me, we hire personalities. We hire talent. We hire entertainers. We teach them radio. Uh, radio's easy. Radio's hitting buttons and talking into a microphone. Honestly, that's the easy part. Having a personality that comes through a speaker, that's not the easy part. And so when you look at some of these amazing talents we have, uh, Big Boy, for example. Big Boy was the bodyguard for a hip hop group called The Far Side. Yep. And they came in and did our Friday Night Flavor show in LA. And everyone said, we don't know who that guy is, but he's a star. He's funny. He's amazing. He was a lot bigger at the time. Yeah. And literally reached out, and the Baker Boys were really part of that. And those guys were just mixers from Bakersfield, for God's right. sakes, that ended up being jocks on the air. Yeah. And uh, we brought Big Boy in, and uh, Charlie Weto actually is the guy who would run the board for him, because Big Boy didn't know how to do radio. Yeah. And he would just sit on the other side with a microphone, and Charlie would point at him and Big Boy would entertain, and it is wow. amazing. So again, I've tried to do that. We did it in New York, we, we, we yeah. tried to do it in Phoenix, where I, I found people who weren't radio people necessarily. Uh, we had a guy, Jay Times 3, for a long time on, yes. on Power. I met Jay doing a club night at whatever that club was right there at, at the Diamondback Stadium. It was right outside. Jackson's, on Jackson's thank you yeah. very much. And, uh, and he was the MC. I didn't know who he was. Right. And I gave him my business card. I said, you need to call me on Monday. And uh, uh, I put him on, and, and, and you know, he just had that energy, just had a little right. bit of star power. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, Ramses. I mean, the first time I met Ramses, I was like, I, I don't know what he is, and I don't know what he's good at. I just know he's a star. Uh, we'll figure the rest right. of this stuff out, you know? Right. Uh, and so it really helped me as a program director um, finding talent. And, and, and I'd like to think it's something that I was good at, that I could see something in people. Um, and again, all I would do is uh, give them a stage to perform on. Go get them, you know. Right. And uh, some of them really took it and run with it, which is, which is awesome to see. You know, it's really interesting. And... and um, uh, KTAR here in, in Phoenix, the old Power 92, 92.3, uh, you know, kind of went full circle. I came back to, to 92.3 yeah. on, on your dial. Uh, gave me the opportunity. I, I thought it was unique. I thought it was different. And I, I, what I really liked about it is the type of show that I got to do uh, with Pamela Hughes, my co-host there, um, was not your typical talk radio. I mean, our goal was that... Um, it's talk radio for people that don't like talk radio. <laughs> it wasn't all politics. It wasn't all left versus right. It wasn't like that. It was 
the types of things that everybody talks about. Uh, I like to think of it as it was a top 40 morning show that just didn't have to play any songs. You know, yeah. we got to do a, a lot of things. We got to interview people, uh, got to have fun. And, and, and what was time to be serious, we could be serious too. Right. You know, and we could cover breaking news and important things that people needed to know. And so, you know, having the opportunity to do that in Chicago is, is pretty exciting. You know, I, uh, I'm now on a, a station that is uh, uh, legendary, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky to be on a station it's called WLS. Stands for World's Largest Store. It was owned by Sears 100 years ago, 90 years ago, or whatever. Right. World's Largest Store, and it's had some of the, not just Chicago's uh, biggest radio talent, but some of the biggest radio people ever uh, have come through those halls and, and worked on that station. So it's, it's quite an honor to be able to do it. And I get to get up every morning and uh, uh, hopefully entertain Chicago to a certain extent and inform, yeah. along the, inform them along the way and, uh, and tell a bunch of stupid stories, which is kind of what I do. I blush at the special part and, <laughs> and loved, I, I assure you. I don't think of myself as that. I think that uh, I've been very lucky and placed in, in some great positions. And yeah. I'd like to think I took advantage of those positions in the sense of I made the most of it a, as I could, you know, that um, we all have these opportunities in life. We all find ourselves faced with a fork in the road or a door opening. And it comes down to what you do with that. Um, uh, you know, I don't think they're necessarily good or bad decisions. It's all, okay, what are you gonna make out of uh, what you have in front of you? And I'd like to think that uh, the people that came through power, the people I had a chance to work with, and uh, the radio station I left behind, you know, for example. Uh, I hope I, I left it better than I found it. And uh, it's, it's really cool to see uh, and I do go back to Power 98 now, and I've been back there recently, and see, I call them some of the kids, I mean, literally, they were kids when I hired them or when they were working there, and see them in roles of management now and see them, them coming up. And again, I just, I'm so proud to see, like, uh, you know, what some of these people have, have done and, and, and how they've taken the ball and ran with it themselves. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool, and I love being a part of, of Phoenix Radio and Phoenix Radio history. God, that makes you sound old. And, uh, you know, it's uh, maybe my history isn't done. I don't know. You know, I mean, radio's a crazy biz. Uh, you know, don't, 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 don't get it twisted. I could be back. You never know. You know, I, I don't think I would be here today if some people hadn't taken me under their wing, if some people hadn't shown me uh, and given me a, an opportunity. And uh, uh, there's a few people out there. Uh, Clark Ingram down in Tucson was a program director who saw something in me. And I love him dearly and was a wonderful, is a wonderful man. Um, uh, Dick Stein uh, gave me a job when nobody else wanted to, basically, and let me be a program director, a uh, music director, and a jock on an AM station and let me do whatever I wanted, which I now know is not normal. Uh, uh, Rick Cummings and Michelle Mercer uh, at Power 106 for seeing something in me uh, as well. And then uh, um, again, I've mentioned so many of the, of the different people uh, that, that uh, came through Phoenix and um, just, I, I would be remiss. I know I'd miss somebody and I feel bad about it. Uh, basically just watch all these other videos. I love all those people, they're awesome, you know? And I had a chance to work with them and uh, I was better off for it. I was luckier for it. And there you have it. And nothing but love and respect to my man Bruce St. James, you know. That guy's got so many stories, and he's definitely another one, you know, who needs like a book, documentary or something, because it's just endless with him, you know. And just such a good guy, such a good guy, you know. Very happy to have him on the show. Make sure you guys are following him on social media. Shout out to my brother Jimmy Nelson on that camera. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, because I sure did. And, uh, you know, when things go wrong, don't go with them. So until next time, stay tuned, stay blessed, stay healthy, and just give me five, y'all. Yeah.